July the 16th, 2023. As we've had a very powerful earthquake in the Aleutian Islands, uh, part of the Alaskan chain, 7.2, it was 98 kilometers south of Sandpoint, Alaska. And this is down um, where you sell all the fishing, where the world's most dangerous catch with the crab fishermen were, down in that area. Now, there's no tsunami warnings out uh, as of the latest report, but we do have some buoys that are moving three along this island chain we'll take a look at them they're not showing any large wave heights but very quick sharp movements is what we're seeing let's take a look at that and I'll, just while i'm here guys you're, we are getting aftershocks in the area some are a little strong fours and threes and the pressure seems to be moving along this section the very northern tip of the ring of fire here You've got one in uh, Yakutut, Alaska, just a three, but it's showing pressure movement along this area. Just keep an eye on it as we go through the day. As a matter of fact, keep an eye on it for the next few days because we have now, they are tracking the CME that I talked about yesterday. Even though some people said there's no worry, I knew better. And looking at the North Pacific, we got one, two, Three buoys going off. Here's uh, off of southeast of Cherkov. Here, this one is uh, southeast of Shemagan Island. This one is in South Dutch Harbor. That again, that's where we saw the world's deadliest catch filmed. A lot of it was filmed in this area. But if you look right here, let's look at the Shemagan in the middle. You're seeing kind of normal wave height. The blue line indicates these intervals occur every 15 minutes. But when that line changes from blue to red, right here, it's 15 second intervals. You see a very quick, sharp jump right there that was a higher peak than the rest of the waves. So it was just like a sharp uh, jolt from this quake. Could have very well been solar, and I'll show you why. Now this is data coming in from our satellite called the Discovery Satellite and it's three things that they're measuring in this particular chart. In the center in the purple line is the speed of the solar wind. This is a three day chart. Notice it goes from 0 to 12, 0 to 12, 0 to 12. These are three days. This is today. Now we saw very high elevations in solar wind here at around 590, 600 kilometers per second, nearly a million miles per hour. But then here today we see a jolt. See that spike right there, cruising along, letting off the pressure. Now, let me say this. When you see a sudden release of pressure from here to here, went from uh, 6 to 400 kilometers per second, then that release in itself can cause problems. You can have an impact release, like squeezing a basketball or our magnetic uh, field or magnetic shields, excuse me, then that sudden release can do the same amount of uh, shifting of the plates. But right here, during around this time of this quake, we saw a sharp spike that rose. I hope you can see it right there in the purple, rose way up, and it's not really giving me numbers at that point, but you can see it here. Now, in the orange, this is how thick that density of protons, not photons, but protons, are in the cloud, or in the CME, or the solar wind, right there. The green line is the temperature. All three spiked at the same exact point today. See that? Right there. Now, I think that's what we saw on our earthquake. Now, this is from, I think, a CME that was that left around the 14th, 13th or 14th, that we see now. But the big ones are coming from the one that I said, uh, I think it was yesterday, I showed that uh, large CME that left the sun. Let's look at that. Now, yesterday, after I did the video, I noticed that space weather uh, said they didn't think there was going to be a CME. You know, they were waiting on information. And then we had some observers that are on YouTube that uh, also said the same thing. I would never say that with an earth-facing CME like that, guys. Come to my channel. Be very careful. Be very suspicious of which observers you use because some of these guys are paid to put out disinformation. Believe it or not, they are. I'm not naming any names, but that's exactly what's happening. It's been going on for at least 10 years. And every time something dangerous happens, they say, 
don't worry about it, it's nothing. Well, it, follow them at your own peril. Let's take a look at this. This is uh, starting back on the uh, 15th, and we're going to see it peak right here. Let me play it forward. This actually is called a cannibal CME because there's two blasts. And leave, the sun is in the center right there. You can see two blasts leave. That is that um, CME that we saw. Right here, it's going to peak on the 18th at around 1,700 hours. Right, let me back it up. The actual peak is right in here. And you're going to start seeing the impact as it rises, peaks here, and then takes its time to come back down. Now, this is over a um, several-hour period. So uh, on the 18th at 1,500 hours, that 1,500 is 3 o'clock in the afternoon. 1,200 is 12. Add 3 hours. Excuse me, you got uh, 1,500. Now take 5 hours off of that because you are we are dealing with universal time here. But on the East Coast, that would be about 10 o'clock in the morning impact time. Remember, as it leaves the sun, one of these CMEs, it travels. And I don't, I don't want to hear any flat Earth stuff today, please. It leaves the sun um, very quickly, and it has to travel 93 million miles to hit our planet. And that's why you see the solar wind speed at a million miles an hour. But is it, it's like barrel velocity of a rifle. And when it comes out of the barrel, it's at its fastest speed just about. And then it, over time, as it goes through the projection, it slows down. So they put, same thing with the CME, they will put a minus or plus seven hours of w or window of impact time but again around 10 a.m. is what this is saying on the 18th which would be what Tuesday guys coming in so we got to pay attention to that but there is exactly what we were dealing with right there and a cannibal CME as we play this forward is when there's two CMEs and the second CME is traveling faster than the first one and they catch up together and you have the combined impact of both and that's what we're seeing here I'm gonna bring this a little closer let it play through one time right in there now let's I'm gonna stop it I'm gonna bring it up closer now, I know that most of you guys understand what we're looking at but uh, we have some new people all the time in the center of this model is the Sun the earth is the green dot right there and what it is it's between a red and blue dot which is stereo a and b satellites a lot of times we've seen over the last at least the full last solar cycle of 12 years stereo a would be up here stereo b would be down there and that would give us three views of the sun a left side a right side and then the side from our earth facing satellites like soho and uh, the other ones but guys, let's play this through again. Uh, you'll see two CMEs here and here, and, and then this is the Earth. That was a very strong CME, and let no one tell you that there will be not there will be no impacts. We don't know exactly where this will occur, but if you're talking about 10 a.m. in the morning, New York East Coast, then the U.S. is definitely Earth facing or Sun facing, right? because it's coming from that direction. The other side of the Earth will be in at nighttime, not Earth-facing. Now, while I'm here, let's take a look at the national satellite images. Guys, this smoke is very thick. Look right here, guys. What is this? Illinois, Indiana area here coming up onto the east side of Lake Michigan. All the way down into central Mississippi. All of my friends up in the Delta, this smoke is already here. I'll pull this up let you look closer but just look at some of the thickness areas I bet you it's very hard to see the correct light in this in the sky this morning probably very dim orange or yellow for a lot of you guys maybe this large thunderstorm that we're seeing up in the Kansas area will take some of this smoke out of the picture but this could become very dangerous as well as the storm that we're seeing in Oklahoma again here in the south gonna be another hot day I would not mind some of this moisture trying to build up come through here again that the clouds yesterday kept us out of the 110 115 I think we peaked out at about 107 but guys I will come back in after I get this video up uh, I want to get a little more information about what's going on up in Canada and there will be a couple more updates throughout the day but um, 
Back to the earthquake in the Aleutian Islands. I think it was about a year ago we saw one of those filament releases like that. It was not as strong as that one. It was more of a single winding. And I'd mentioned that the Aleutian, Aleutian Islands in Alaska, for some reason, always seem to be affected by not just a coronal mass ejection, but by those large filament releases like we saw. And then I said it would probably come in around 5.30 in the morning. Someone came on that morning at around 5.30 and said they, they alarm clock went off at 5.30, they were going to see what happened, and the whole house shook. So I've been watching it for a while, not bragging here, but the Aleutian Islands, guys, for some reason that northern part of the Ring of Fire, when we get up seeing me like that, and the our section of the world is turned towards the sun, that area is affected. And we already saw it this morning. We saw that spike in the solar wind, right? That was from a CME from a few days before this one that we're watching now. It hit. They didn't think it would hit. It was going to go south, but it hit. It was a little later, and that's what threw them off. That's because they've got to put in the fact that your muzzle velocity slows the longer that the projectile is from the point or from the barrel. Same thing with the CME, slows it down. So, but it, without the satellites out there, you don't know it. In other words, you leave one satellite picks up a certain speed, you get closer to our planet, and they see that speed slowing down, so they try to get in there and calculate that uh, the solar wind speed there. But guys, this is going to be a rough day for smoke. Let's look at this a little closer. I just wanted to show everyone here in the south how far this is dipping. You can see this is coming through all of eastern Arkansas. We're down just north of uh, Jackson, Mississippi, the center of the state, and it loops back up right here. You can see it in the air. How much further south during the day will this dip? I don't know. But uh, guys, be very careful with your any kind of fires that you're building. It's too hot to do it. And we had... I'm going to say it nicely. Somebody that's not paying attention yesterday evening here in this community out in the country decided to burn a bunch of logs in a pit fire right about dark. It completely inundated the whole area here up around the church and the other homes are spread across. They're not we're not packed in like a neighborhood, but it spread across the whole area. Fire department had to come out, things like that. I had to get the just had got the dog settled in, fed. The puppies are all in the air conditioned, everything ready to go, and they wanted, I let them out to play for a little bit. It was cooler in the afternoon, and then smoke rolled over the hill. It was unbelievable. You couldn't believe. I mean, you couldn't breathe. You could hardly see. It was choking you. So don't do that. I, I called the fire department that came out, said it was down the road, a fire pit burning. Don't be one of those people. Wake up. I know most of you are, would never do that. But some people have no clue what they're doing. It, right here, it was unbearably hot. Most people couldn't work, even at 107. But they want to come in and start a big fire and inundate the whole neighborhood. It's illegal some places. I don't know what the fire department told them to do. In this case, it's clear this morning. But uh, again, we all have to use our heads when we're dealing with critical situations. In other words, all day I spent trying to keep everyone cool and water and food and cool in the AC and then someone comes in right when everything's settling down and cooling off then you can't even go outside because of the smoke a little rant but maybe it will uh, someone will listen by the way I put it on our local community uh, Facebook page I got kicked off that page for mentioning it so I know the uh, owners of, or the people that run that particular community Facebook page and I think the fire came from their location and it's usually like the first ten cackle that uh, it laid the egg you heard that within ten minutes I got kicked off that Facebook page for mentioning it and the dangers involved with it people just uh, we even have we do have Democrats here in the south believe it or not but guys we're watching this you watch it there will be a lot of updates in the next few days. Be safe.